Welcome to Retail Media Thursdays. I am Michelle Irwin and today's guest is no stranger to the camera. We are welcoming Daniel Torres Dwyer from the FMCG guys. Welcome back to the UK, Daniel. Thank you, thank you. Good Does to it... see you in the other side of the world. I know, we met in grocery shop last week in Las Vegas and now we're back in London. That feels like a month ago. <laughs> it really does. Here, we, here like we are, here we are. A lifetime. Do you want to introduce yourself for anyone who might not know? Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm Daniel, I'm the host and and founder, I guess, of the FMCG Guys podcast. I also run a recruitment business in consumer goods and retail. Does it feel feel weird being on that side of the camera? It does, it does, one? it does, it does. It's, it's, it's strange, but it's nice to be on the other side of the of the table for once. I'm going to give you a taste of your own medicine. Uh, okay. <laughs> Throw me those curveballs. Uh, before we get into the retail media questions, which is what we're here to talk about, what's been your peak of the week, personally or professionally? Oof. There's been a lot of peaks actually. So yeah, we were just at grocery shop and yeah, it was great to just to reconfirm how how the CPG guys who are like our US partners and ask the FMCG guys like how far we're bringing the brand and actually like it's really bringing together like a lot of the community and CPG and retail and also a lot of the supplier side. It's been the, just the confirmation of that has been really cool. Plus I love to travel for work. I went to, got to go to New York as well. So quite a few peaks. Perfect. Yeah. Did you copy their name or did they copy yours? I copied theirs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so Plagiarism. basically they started the podcast first um, and then a few months later I started my own podcast and I heard through my now co-host Efrain that they wanted to bring the concept to Europe. Okay. So basically I renamed my old po my podcast the FMCG Guys as the European version of the CBG Guys. Ah. So yeah, people ask me like, are we partners or did we copy them? And it's actually both. Smart. Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, and which pub are we in today and why? So we're in a pub called the Grafton Arms. Basically, I, I've been to many pubs in London but remember none. So you suggested me to come here. So here, here we are. And so it was the reason convenient. we're here is because it's convenient basically, for me. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, it's convenient for you. Okay, okay, good, good. <laughs> Super close to the office. Ah, there you go. <laughs> and a very good beer garden. It is nice, it is nice, yeah. Cool. So, retail media, you obviously host the FMCG guys. You speak to a lot of people in the industry. Yeah. I feel like you're almost like a therapist. They're telling you their pain points, <laughs> yeah, their challenges. Basically. What's going on? Like, what's top of mind? What so, are you hearing right it's now? It's been interesting, right? Because I think that when the whole retail media boom started three years ago, approximately in the US, I think we were all a bit skeptical about it and we thought it would be a bit of a fad, an American thing. But I think that in the last year and a half, only we've really seen that like confirmed here in Europe as well that it's something that's really like something like per, relatively small but I think it's a point where like retailers and consumer goods companies have come to a consensus which doesn't normally happen yeah. um, and we're and, and it's basically transformed like something that was old in some way which is like media dollars spent on retail media it's really like become institutionalized and it's really transforming how both retailers and brands operate independently and of course how they interact with each other. Yeah, I think the turning point for me in that was last year at Demexco where you show up at this event that's traditionally been digital marketing yeah. and the retailers have booths. Oh wow. And I mean, we saw it last week at grocery shop yeah. and all of them, like they're all in the digital marketing space, they're all in advertising. Like, And Can, this... for example, was also like huge. Yeah. I, I mean, I've never been to Can, but I don't think it was like that before, no? Uh, no, yeah. not at all. So I think, yeah, there's definitely been a turning point here in Europe, yeah. in Europe in the last I think two years. It's a thing that also like both retailers obviously are excited about it because they make more money, but brands are very excited about it because basically they found that that's the best way or one of the best ways that they can understand the, their consumers. Mm -hmm. And that's a big challenge for brands now, like really understand how consumers behave. And so we, would we talked a lot about DTC uh, like three or four years ago for FMCG brands, but that really didn't work out as a business model because it was very independent from the main sales channel, if you like. And now with, with um, retail media, it's the data that they get through the retailers where that's where the, the shoppers are. So they don't have to derail the consumers into like going DTC. They can just find them where they are and get the data. Yeah, for sure. And I think especially in light of like cookies. Oh yeah. The rumors around those going away and they're not going away, but people yeah, are that's still not, looking for that's cookie not my, That's not my area of like, that I, there I get a bit lost. <laughs> like my therapy skills only like make me learn that much. 
but yeah, that's that's obviously a conversation like about the cookies, like how important they'll be or not. But I think that other than that, there's just so many layers to it, right? Yeah. And then you have the layer as well of like that it's not a fixed picture. So obviously there's like retailers and brands are trying to figure themselves out how they work together. But in the meantime, technology keeps on advancing. And yeah, for example, ads technology that keeps on evolving. So it won't be a fixed picture by any means. Yeah. You mentioned in your first answer that... Um, I don't remember what I said. In <laughs> you mentioned that uh, Europe is kind of catching up to the US. You held the Candid Commerce event with Medium in Amsterdam yeah, a few yeah. weeks ago. And then obviously the grocery shop was last week. What kind of differences are you seeing between Europe and the US? Like, is yeah. the US way ahead? Are there any areas that Europe's ahead in? Well, there's like one key difference between Europe and the US is that the US is like a pretty uh, homogeneous market. Yeah. It's huge, but it's homogeneous. Whereas Europe has like many different markets, many different speeds. I think that the general consensus that US has generally been, been more advanced in re online retail media. Uh, is that on-site? I think they call it. Mm. And then in terms of like in-store and off-site, Europe has been more advanced. But then that's the thing, you go country by country and it's like a completely different story, right? Like Netherlands, one thing, and we had um, the head of retail media of Ahold at our event, so he gave some very interesting points. Um, but then France is a completely different story. Spain, I'm, I'm from Barcelona, it's completely different. Italy, like everything is. Germany. Yeah, it's, it's so different. And I think actually, even for me internally, like having those conversations and yeah, yeah, making yeah. everybody realize that Europe isn't a country. <laughs> like yeah, there's many no, countries definitely. within it and we have to have definitely. a very different strategy. And yeah like different retailers, like Bold.com in the Netherlands yeah. is so much bigger than Amazon, so yeah. it's... Uh, and now it's interesting now, like for example, that Lidl is going big into retail media, yeah. very big. We'll have them on the podcast soon, actually. Ah, yeah. Plug, watch this space. <laughs> yes, watch this space. Um, also, Carrefour is like a kind of uh, pan-European, but they're not in all the European markets either, right? So I think it will be a matter of like seeing how each retailer evolves and also how the, there's a school of thought that says like in terms of like measurement and, and standardization and so on that maybe it won't be like retailers will never like agree on things and will have to be each FMCG company that has their own measurement tools and their own standards. I definitely think it's going that way. I'm not sure you there's do? ever going to be a consensus. Yeah, is it, then you speak with different people and everybody has their own. Everybody like has a different year opinion. ago everybody was pushing towards standardization, but I don't think it's the case anymore. No, no, even 12 months ago, we said that it's going to be really hard to get full standardization yeah. across retail media. I think it's going to head to a way where it's kind of bought more programmatically. I don't think, yeah, that's another I don't thing. think the retailers are going to own those relationships directly with the uh, consumer goods companies necessarily. I think there's going to be intermediaries like has happened with like traditional DSPs. That's my kind of gut yeah. feeling for where this is going, which then, starts to, as you think about like where the balance of power lies, makes it a really interesting yeah. kind of... Yeah, no, it's, inter it's an interesting one because yeah, while technology will allow smarter programmatic, if you like, at the same time, you also have other people saying like new retail media networks coming up and each of them having their own offerings, mm -hmm. which is kind of going in the other, in some way going to the other direction. So yeah, yeah it, it's fascinating though, because every month, the picture looks different. Yeah. On the technology side, on the mm, new networks, like Ocado, for example, mm -hmm. which you would think would be like, yeah, the first one to launch it, just launched it now, for example. Yeah. I think that every re new retail media network that comes up has like a new feature or something that they offer more to, to brands, to consumers, so. Yeah, they're all trying to stand out with their own USP, exactly, whatever that exactly. might be. And now the ones that started at the beginning, a lot of them are like blocked in like working only with one big system and they like the more advanced ones are more like composable so they have different solutions mm -hmm. for search for image like you know what i mean yeah so another event on the radar this week is path to purchase summit in the uk yeah. i know you were there last year yeah, doing yeah, the yeah. podcast i saw you yeah, yeah um big theme from last year's event was in store and you touched on and it. standardization and standardization but the in store piece yeah. i think was um I mean, probably SMG's influence, like the Shopper Marketing uh -huh. Group, that's kind of their heritage. But where do you see that going? There was so much talk about it last week at Grocery Shop. Like, what's the future of in-store looking like? How are we going to get, are we going to get to a point where there's better connectivity with online? 
I mean, yeah, like for sure, no? Like in some way or another, there, there will be. What I don't know is like who will, I think that somebody will crack it and then the others will follow. And it's going to be interesting, no? Because the kings of retail media have been Amazon traditionally mm. and they don't have in store. I mean, there's some rumors now that they will open shops, but they will never have the scale. So we'll have to see like what technologies allow it, what's the best way to do it. Uh, also like privacy and, and so on, how that all that comes in. But yeah, I'm sure that we will see like retail media having like a full online and, and offline presence. It, it just has to be like that, right? I think it has to, especially like we're already seeing them kind of breaking out of the walled gardens and forming these partnerships with the likes of TikTok and Pinterest mm. and Google. I don't see how it can't extend to in-store yeah. and everybody's going to want that connectivity between the measurement. Like, where have people been? What's the incremental impact of yeah. each of these different channels? So. I, I think that if that doesn't happen, like, and it may, it may be a bumpy road, I think that there may be ups and downs and like that there can be, there could be like a certain skepticism mm. because I think that the more that we advance, the more brands will understand what metrics matter. And if the, the retailers like don't keep up with them, I think that there could be a point where they say, well, maybe we're spending too much money here. Yeah. I'm going to change topic slightly. I read an article yesterday that I thought was really interesting around um, like the use of AI in retail mm. media and just in kind of performance marketing generally. Yeah. Obviously, we've seen with the likes of Google, Pmax and Facebook, like they're trying to take the power away from the advertisers. They're using all of this AI to power the algorithms. They're kind of black boxes. We're seeing it now with Amazon Performance Plus. Uh -huh. What do you think the role of a marketer, like who's hands on keyboard, managing campaigns, is going to look like over the next 12 months as these kind of AI and algorithms start to get smarter and smarter and take that kind of campaign management power away from them? Yeah, I think that the general consensus is that like it will have to, they'll have to go back to like being real marketers, like understanding the brand, like the heart and soul of the brand, having a long term vision and understanding the, how they can use these tools, which had all be, always been the role of marketing. And I think that marketing had gone into a role that, did, that was more technical. And I think that AI will actually allow to bridge all that technical gap and really become marketers. And listen, the sexy part of marketing, yeah. if you like. The fun so, part. So marketing will be sexy again, thanks to AI. Ah, that's, that's your prediction. Uh, that's my prediction. Well, it's already what? kind of happening. I, I don't disagree with you on that. I think even myself, like I started in the creative industry. I worked in advertising. Yeah. So like that was, we had to use our brains. We had to really think. We had to get to the like insights and the mm. problem. Whereas my role has become so data driven. Yeah. Like it really has become about kind of intense signals that we're getting from the data. Yeah, we're not yeah. thinking about the people that yeah. we're marketing to anymore. And I, I hope that you're right. Like, I hope it does start no, to bring look, more I'll, creativity I'll, I'll give you like an it. example. So on the podcast, we're starting to do like some, for Instagram and social media, like some images with quotes on them, like to gain, mm. to gain like more visibility, engagement, blah, blah. And basically you can like put the transcript that you get from YouTube into chat gpt and you're like okay give me some quotes so they give you some quotes and you're basically skipping going through like the podcast listening yeah. into it i mean that's not data driven at all but and then you can be like more creative and do diff try different creative things and skipping all the tedious parts yeah. so it's pretty cool yeah it's gonna come back the fun side of marketing well, is coming back exactly and then you have for example the example of nike which um talk of the town has been that there's been the whole DTC push that where they were like going from wholesale to DTC yeah. which didn't work out but then there's a whole other thing of really market how they were marketing and that they relied too much on data and their campaigns were very data like okay our consumers want this specific thing so we're going to do that and that that hasn't really worked out for them in the long term because they're not really building a brand mm. and now they're going to they've hired a guy that's more like traditional Nike brand building what the brand it's all about what the soul is. So yeah. I think that we'll see more of that, especially since in FMCG also, brands are having this huge challenge connecting with consumers and really being relevant. Yeah, there's so many of them nowadays. Like they've got to do something to stand out from the crowd. Yeah. Um, final question, predictions for 2025. We're, at, we're in the final quarter, so I'm allowed to ask this now. Oh, we talked God. previously before mm -hmm. around kind of some of the changes that might happen, yeah. but yeah, I think, I think that along the lines of what we were just saying, I think that brand market, old marketing will be back. 
so more like creating like maybe like uh, aspirational brands instead of like so performance driven I think we'll see that <coughs> enhanced by technology I think that that will be the winning combination and we'll see more of I think that retail media will keep evolving I'm unable to tell you where to <laughs> <laughs> I mean one thing is for sure it's definitely going to keep evolving yeah yeah maybe that was a very easy answer um, yeah it's, it's, it's a challenging one no because I don't know I think there will be if, if from what I'm hearing is confirmed, I think that they'll be like the first retailers that started doing retail media, they will want to like break out of like the like crystal box there in them a little bit where they have like one big supplier for everything and become more composable. I think that that will be a big thing. Like for example, in search to get like more intelligent search, like for example, the experience that you have buying on Amazon, on walmart.com or also in Mercado Libre in Latin America, where every like a user has a different homepage you don't find in many other retailers. Mm. So I think we'll head more to the, into that direction. Okay, you heard it here first. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exclusive. Okay, so we always have the end of the show. I thought that that was the last question. No, 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 no. You, this is the best bit. Oh, ah, okay, okay. So the end of the show is always a quick fire round. Okay. But I decided to do something a bit different with you because oh. we were in Vegas last week. Ah, okay. And I was you really know what? lame. I, I didn't gamble at all. You were in a casino last time I, I was, saw you. I was in a casino. <laughs> like, it's inevitable. You go down from your room and you're in a casino. Um, and I know I bailed that night because I was tired. I was I know, being really that, lame. Yeah, so I, I thought I'll bring I, the casino I, you to you. I actually stayed up to see how they demolished the Tropicana. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually watch that? Yeah, that was amazing. It looked really cool. So I've brought the casino to you. Okay. The let's only do this. game I know is called Ride the Bus. Okay. And if you get it wrong, you have to take a drink. Okay. Okay. So red or black? Ooh, red. Ah, ah. I have to take a drink. Ah, so it continues. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna go with black. You have to take a drink. Like the whole thing? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> not the whole thing. <laughs> we'll be drunk. <laughs> Um, it's, higher, 11, it's 11 a.m. by the way. Higher or lower? Then, then mine? Higher. Oh, you're gonna oh, take a drink. Oh boy. <laughs> That's high, so I'm gonna go low. Ah! Yes. <laughs> okay, this makes this really easy. So the next one is inside or outside? Inside or outside? As in, like, it's only outside because we've only got ace. So it's not within those two. Oh numbers. yeah, outside. So you drink? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Actually, yeah, probably. Outside. Oh. As far outside as it could be. Okay. The next one is what suit is it? Suit. Okay. Um. Uh, diamonds. Oh, oh. you got a drink. <laughs> I'm gonna go clubs. We haven't had one yet. We both got like the one that we had in the middle. And that was it. I'm not going to keep going because otherwise <laughs> we will be drunk. <laughs> good idea. So good to see you. Likewise. Welcome back to the UK and Thank I hope you. you have a good week here with the event. I will, I will for sure. And I'll see you soon.